The following is a production of the Computer Information Systems Department at the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to explore return values and variable scope in Python. In a previous video, we explored basic functions and parameters. If you have not already watched that video or are not otherwise already familiar with functions and parameters, I suggest you pause this video and watch my YouTube video, Introduction to Python Functions, and then come back to this video. In our previous video, we examined methods that could take in values through parameters, manipulate those parameters, and then print them. However, these functions did not give the results of the work they performed in the body of the function back to the part of the program that called them. If we want to return a value from a function, we need to include a return statement. When a return statement is called, it will end the operation of the function it is part of and will return the stated value to the calling program line. Let's do a quick example to illustrate what I'm talking about. In this example, I have created a function called getFullName. The function header is on line 5 and the body of the function is the code from lines 6 to 11. Lines 8 and 9 are commented out, and I'll get to these later in this video. The getFullName function will accept two parameters, fname and lname. The first thing the function does is print out the values of the parameters it was passed. This is always a good way to debug and test your code. Next, the function concatenates the values of the parameters fname and lname and assigns that concatenated value to a variable called first and last. Finally, the function will return the value of the first and last variable to the line of code that called the getName function. In this case, the function was called by a print statement and the print statement will print the value returned by the call to the getFullName function. As we run this code, we get the following outcome. This is relatively simple. Now, let's pretend that we don't want the first and last name to be hard-coded. Let's pretend we want to get those values from the user. In that case, we can use the input function to get two user inputs, and then we can assign those inputs to the variables user input one and user input two. Just to be sure what we've got, we're going to print out the values that we collected from the user. At line 21, we call the getFullName function, and we feed it the values that we collected from the user at lines 15 and 16. When the function is called, the value of user input 1 is sent to the parameter fname, and the value of user input 2 is sent to the parameter lname. The first and last names are concatenated into one value, which is then assigned to the first and last variable. And the value of the first and last variable is returned to the function call and assigned to the variable full name. At line 23, I can print the value of the variable full name, and I see that it is the value returned by the get full name function. It is the first and last name of the user concatenated together. One quick but very important note. 
If you call a function and send fewer or more values in the function call than the definition requires, the function will throw an error. You can't just choose which parameters you are going to send, although you kind of can if you learn about function overloading later in your coding career, but for now, that's beyond the scope of this class. For now, let's follow the rule. The number of parameters must match in the function definition and in the function call. So we've covered functions, parameters, and return values. The last major thing I want to cover in this video is variable scope. Variable scope is a simple concept, but it often trips up individuals who are new to programming. Variable scope is covered in every programming textbook, and this video does not substitute for studying your book. But a quick and dirty discussion of variable scope is well worth our time. Let's start by uncommenting lines 8 and 9 of our code. These lines occur within the body of the function get full name. Now, before you run the code or watch me run it, stop and ask yourself, will lines 8 and 9 work correctly? In this case, the answer is no, they will not. Let's run the code and watch what happens. The reason why this code fails is simple. When it gets to lines 8 and 9, it encounters variables, user input 1 and user input 2, that have not yet been declared, and the interpreter doesn't know what they are or what to do with them. So, it throws an error. Let's try this. Let's put these lines ahead of the function definition, like this. Now the code will run, and it will work just fine because the variables are declared before they are used in the program. Now, here's another question for you. If I try to print the values of the parameters that are defined in the getFullName function outside the body of the getFullName function, will I be able to do it? We can see that I'm attempting this in lines 27 and 28. And you'll notice I'm already being told that I have a problem. Let's run the code and see what happens. The code initially runs, but it throws an error when it encounters line 27, when it tries to print the value of the parameter f name. The problem is f name is only defined within the get full name method. When we see it at line 27, it is outside of its bounds, it cannot be read, and will cause an error to be thrown. Here's one last question for you. Can the variable, not the parameter, but the variable that I created in getFullName be accessed outside the function? To test this, let's see if we can print the variable first and last, which I created in the getName function. When I try to run this code, it will initially run But when it encounters line 30, where it tries to print this variable first and last, the code will throw an error. It cannot see this variable that was created and is only defined within the method getFullName.
At this point, I want to offer you some encouragement. Variable scope is a problem that even veteran coders get hung up on. You're bound to encounter these bugs and it can definitely be frustrating. The best thing to do is to really study the rules of scope listed in our textbook so that you know the basic rules. Once you get the basics down, you want to practice, practice, practice. I hope this video has been helpful. Please contact me if you have questions. Have a great day.